Today, we're going to go on a journey 10 quintillion years into the future, a time where our universe will look and act completely different. Stars will have died out, black holes will form, and Earth will be a distant memory. Before we get started, let's clear up how many years we're going into the future. What is 10 quintillion years anyway? Well, it's a one followed by 19 zeros. Yeah, it's pretty big. 10 billion billions. We can't even squeeze all those zeros onto your screen. But never mind that. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's start one billion years into the future, where something terrifying is happening. In one billion years, Earth will look incredibly different. What was once our blue marble full of life is now a dull brown rock with no life to be seen. Changes to our sun have killed all life on Earth. The sun has been growing hotter and hotter, about one degree more every 100 million years. And the way surface temperature of Earth is now 47 OC, 117 F. This increase in heat first disrupted the carbon cycle. Plants died off, then animals shortly thereafter. There might have been a little bit of life left in our oceans, but then it got hotter and the water evaporated. What was once a beautiful planet teeming with life is now a dry, dead rock. But what about us humans? Well, hopefully, we made it. Out of Earth and built colonies somewhere else in the galaxy before the sun decided to kill us. But you wouldn't catch us living on Mars. Even that would be too dangerous with this hotter sun. We humans would need to be living much farther away. We'd need to set up shop in other galaxies within the Milky Way. Hopefully, within a billion years, humans have developed an efficient system of populating habitable planets. By this time, a populated Mars would be a distant memory. But it's possible that the outer planets in our solar system, or their moons, might become habitable for us for a little while. There's also another possibility. There may be a subset of humans who live on in the form of pure artificial intelligence, people who have uploaded their consciousness into machines and live virtually forever. But the machines that host them? Well, they'd need to be powered by something somewhere. So physical humans would still be around and set up these colonies that will keep our virtual humans going. Living forever with virtual consciousness sounds cool, right? But here is the catch. None of these mind-bending possibilities can happen in our future without the right energy solutions. We're already struggling to sustainably power the things we have now. So how can we expect to fuel such an advanced existence? Well, if we want to evolve into a civilization filled with extraordinary advancements, we need to start developing cutting-edge technology to power it. Thankfully, a publicly listed company called Hillcrest Energy Technologies is tackling that. Now, right now, they're creating innovative solutions that make energy conversion more efficient and boost the performance of electric vehicles and renewable energy systems. Take their Zero Voltage Switching, or ZVS, inverter, for example. It's a device that converts electricity. Let me break it down. Solar panels generate direct current DC electricity, but our buildings, homes, and power grids require alternating current AC electricity. To make energy from solar panels usable, an inverter is needed to convert DC into AC. That's where Hillcrest comes in. Their ZVS inverter is a game changer. It operates at an incredible 99.7% efficiency, reducing energy, loss and offering potentially millions of dollars in additional revenue for renewable energy projects. Now you see how they're shaping tomorrow's power systems. Their tech could reduce battery pack sizes in electric vehicles by up to 15%, cutting costs by thousands of dollars per vehicle. And with potential applications in Formula E racing, data centers, and grid-connected energy systems, they're already catching the eye of major players. Click the link in the description to learn more about their technology and products. You know, it's reassuring to know that the electricity challenges we face today are being actively tackled with innovative solutions while helping the planet. If we're going to have a future filled with such extraordinary possibilities, we'll need a company like Hillcrest to help power it. But this is just the start of where our future is headed. 
Let's hop back in your time machine and go forward another few billion years. Time for your next stop, 10 billion years into the future. As you're flying in your time machine, you notice that the solar system looks very, very different. The sun is now much smaller. It's about the size of Earth. It's also white and much dimmer than before. Over the last 9 billion years, the sun burned all the hydrogen in its core. As its shell started burning, it became a red giant. Finally, with all of its fuel burned up and with it reaching an older stage in its life as a star, it became a white dwarf. That's what you're seeing now. During its red giant phase, the enormous energy given off by the sun caused its outer layers to expand, engulfing Mercury and probably Venus, too. It looks like Earth has been vaporized and is stripped down to its iron core. At this point, the sun will cool off for billions of years before it reaches its next stage, a black dwarf. More on that in a minute. As the sun was getting older and dying out, another big event was also happening. Two massive galaxies merged with each other, creating an entirely new galaxy. You've got the Milky Way galaxy, which is the one we live in, and then our neighboring galaxy, Andromeda. Both galaxies are part of a shared space neighborhood containing 50 galaxies. These are called the local group, and due to gravitational forces, some were moving closer together. The Andromeda galaxy moved towards the Milky Way at 400 million kilometers per hour, 250 million mph. If you stood in the middle as they merged, you'd probably feel like you were in the middle of a giant snow globe that had been shaken violently. Except instead of fluffy snow being thrown around, it's rocks, planets, and entire stars. This went on for millions of years. When these two galaxies were finally merged, they created what's known as the Milcomita Galaxy. Would stars have collided during this merger? Well, you might think so, but probably not, because of the vast distances between them. They're really far apart. We're talking hundreds of billions of kilometers. But what would happen to our solar system in this merger? Well, scientists have calculated there's a 50% chance our solar system would be pushed far away from the galactic core, three times further away from where we are today. And there's a 12% chance our solar system would be completely ejected from this new galaxy. But by that point, we humans would no longer be living in our solar system. If we were still around, we'd have populated planets in a galaxy far away. And we'd definitely choose one that wasn't about to go through a merger. So, say goodbye to the Milky Way galaxy and say hello to Milkameda. All right now, it's time to check in and see what else is happening in our universe. In 22 billion years, things start to get a little complicated. Something is going to happen that's known as the Big Rip. According to one theory, we're heading to a point in about 20 billion years where the universe is going to tear itself apart. This will be due to dark energy. Yeah, dark energy. Now, that's something physicists don't even completely understand. But they do know one thing. It's causing the universe to expand faster and faster. Keep this dark energy in mind, as we'll come back to it later. Now, if the Big Rip happens, galaxies that exist today in clusters will begin to stretch apart. Then, all the objects within these galaxies will move away from each other. Star systems, planets, everything will accelerate away from one another right down to their atoms, which will rip apart and dissolve, leading to the end of the universe. Scientists have found some evidence that we could be heading towards this demise, but it's not 100% certain. Good. I was getting a little nervous there. Okay, so for now, let's assume that our universe doesn't rip apart 20 billion years from now. But what happens next? Even though the big rip may not happen, that doesn't mean our universe will be safe. Over these 100 trillion years, stars all across the universe will be dying out. Let's go back for a second to the Big Bang, when the universe began to form. 150 million years after that, stars were created. Now, since the formation of that first star to where you are now, new stars have been, and still are, forming all the time. 
The best way to see this is if you peer into these clouds of interstellar hydrogen gas that are everywhere in space. If you look at a dense area, you can see how it collapses in on itself and leads to the formation of a star. Over the 100 trillion years, you'll notice that stars are forming in all different sizes. The basic rule is, the smaller the star, the longer it lives. Look at this star, which is just under 8% the mass of our sun. It's just a little too small to get hydrogen fusion going, so it's a failed star, also known as a brown dwarf. And here's a bigger one, about 10 times as massive as our sun. It burns hotter, and it's blasting through its fuel very quickly. So in about 20 million years, it'll die out. And you already saw how our sun died after about 10 billion years. But the majority of stars you've seen are smaller than our sun. These are red dwarfs. They're about 8% to 50% the mass of our sun. They're a lot dimmer, but they also live longer, about 80 to 100 billion years. So during this time, you'll start to see a lot of these red dwarfs starting to die out. Then we've got the brown dwarfs. These are so dim that they're hard for you to see. They die in a mellow kind of way, getting cooler and cooler. As they cool, their temperature will drop to 2500 OC, which is cooler than most stars.